Okay, SNES, that's quite a personal choice as well. Mm -hmm. and very often players who have deals with companies, they tend to use other Stay companies' on. snares yeah. Yeah, and things. You, and it's also sort of a fetish for drummers. People is. tend to use, to, to collect a lot of them and use a lot of them. Because of the character of the sound. Yeah, so what about you? No, I'm not that fussy. Yeah. I tend to, I mean, I'm a big 14 by 6.5 man. I do love the 6.5s. Um, I do have a, a, a couple of snare drums, but um, I mainly tend to use, you know, the brand like Sakai. I'm using Sakai. I've got, um, I've got a chrome snare drum. I've got a, a bronze snare drum. I've got a binga snare drum. Um, and as I said, when I do recordings, I'll take in six or seven snare drums because that's the character of the, the drum kit for me. Yeah. And producers, obviously, you know, that snare drum's not quite working with this track. Let's try something else. So, yeah. but I'm not um, as much a boffin on snare drums as other drummers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Recording, you mentioned mm. recording. Mm. Um, do you prefer whole takes? Probably you do, rather than recording in segments, you know. Oh, um, yeah, with, with Heap, it's guitar, bass, drums, well, keyboards, backing tracks That's down. the way it was done 50 years ago, and Best that's way. the way it has to be done. You now, have to yeah. do the correct pre-production, mm. and then you're confident and relaxed to know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, uh, even though when I've done sessions, I've had to go in not knowing and write out what it is I need to play. That's a different thing to doing a recording with pre-production, of course yeah. it is. But um, I'm definitely a one and two take man. I don't like um, yeah. five, six, seven, eight. You lose, you lose something. Yeah. You know, right. I want to capture that special thing. There are a lot of players, especially, you know, the blast beat guys mm. who tend to record in segments because they yeah. say you can't just maintain the same no. level of energy throughout the entire that's track correct. yeah but that's not the case for you it's a different not the case for me. type of music as well right yeah, yeah it's just different i mean i did um avantasia album yeah exactly i wanted to ask you yeah the, the the producer um no just do just do the feat and i'll loop it round because to, to, it's consistency. The, the, the whole point of uh, great musicians is consistency, and certainly in recording, you've got to be um, consistent. So it's far better to have something um, consistent, and then you can concentrate better on on another thing. True. If it's too complicated, True. you know, oh, that's not working there. Do it again. That's not working there. Do it again, and you get tired and. Yeah. It's just not worth it. And there. you've got the technology there to help. And you've you got there. the technology. Yeah. 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 It's, it doesn't really make much difference at the end of the day. Right. When I show you stuff, what happens is, for me, I'm going to have to turn this off. Russell Gilbrook, Animal Stick, Pellwood, Signature Mod. That's the debouncing one, the one that doesn't rebound. That one's the one that rebounds. So, and it's fantastic if you do it with a guitar. <laughs> Especially if he's annoying. So, the idea for me is, look, everybody has an arm, right? Except Def Leppard. But everybody has an arm, and we have a hinge. It's a design mechanism. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, I have my own reasons for certain things, okay? They're not, Russell Gilbrook says, and it says there that, but no, it's not like that. This is my point of view. I've been playing drums 48 years. I started when I was an embryo, and I moved on from there. <coughs> playing drums a long time, and I've figured out that the most simplest way that makes it easy for someone is this. That's the way that the wrists do not do this. That's awkward, and it's an angle, correct? That is not. It's straight up and down, and, that, and the butt finishes there. It doesn't finish here when we play like this. It finishes there when we do this. The wrists can go at enough speed and power for most gigs. We don't need to do all of this silly finger bit. The fingers are there to support the dropping of the stick. That is it. That's why. Where is it? Come here! <coughs> 
That's why. players say that that the new studio technology the copy paste thing and stuff takes away from the it music does, yeah. from its feel and, and mm. so you agree with that no, i do agree with that i mean at the end of the day you work very very hard with a lot of practice to nurture the way you play and sometimes you know it's not about perfection it's about sounding and feeling right mm. and sometimes that air needs to be there and sometimes a mistake is good Sometimes it's real and, and some, it stays. Yeah, and and with the computer system, um, you can make it so right it mm. becomes wrong. It doesn't yeah. sound right, you know. So mm -hmm. there has to be um, an, an area that I I feel as if the musician should be allowed to play. Mm. When doing a clinic or doing a live show, do you have the same kind of preparation routine? I'm not talking about learning songs and things, but mm. warm ups and things like that. Yes, exactly oh, the same. Yeah. I always do half an hour. I like to warm up my hands. Again, I don't think many drummers realise the importance of uh, warming up properly. Mm. You know, they end up with problems with wrists and injury. You know, the whole idea is it's like a, an athlete doing a 100 metre sprint. If they don't warm up, there's going to be problems. And it's the same as this, especially if you play fast or hard or a combination of both. Yeah. It's vital that all the ligaments get warmed up and, it, and then it's much easier to play because they're, they're ready. Mm. Yeah. True. Okay, you've just completed the first round of the competition today, mm. judging the competition. So what would you say about the level of the players so far? I think it's fantastic. I was really surprised. You know, I, the, the, the good thing is that you've got players there who have really stepped their game up as far as technicalities are concerned. Mm. And I have to say, the level of the quality of the backing tracks are superb for them to play along to as well, which is just as important. Yeah. And um, everyone's really sort of um, playing great drums. I was very surprised, and it's and it's very enjoyable to listen to. Yeah, and different styles and things. And yeah. different, of course, yeah. yeah. You know, you don't want to all be the same. And yeah. it's nice to see the differences in the personalities, you know, with the, with yeah. the players and. Um, it's, it's very good. I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It should be even better, yeah. basically. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> should be. <laughs> okay, uh, what about your plans for the immediate future? Is Heap doing anything or are you doing some other stuff? Um, well, we've got a new album to do. Mm -hmm. We don't know when we're going in, but we're writing now. And um, obviously, uh, when that's ready to go and the the contract's finalised, we shall then do pre-production. We're not quite sure on producer yet either, which is always exciting when you get a new producer in. Um, and um, the same old, same old tour in the world with it all again. You know, we never get tired of it, but there's so many fantastic fans throughout the world that want us to play, and we're very fortunate and happy to, to accommodate them and go out there and do it. So, um, um, yeah, we get Christmas out of the way. We're just doing a big tour of, of, of um, Europe with Status Quo because they're finishing their electric set. They're not going to be doing any more electric shows. So we're oh. going to go on there and special guests with them, do a big arena tour with that that takes us up to Christmas. And then we'll look at the album and then we'll be back out again. Mm -hmm. And what about other stuff outside? Um, I don't get a lot of time. I'm, I'm, asked, I'm being asked to do a lot more clinic stuff and I'm trying to fit everything in as best I can. And I, I do do uh, sessions for other people if I'm um, not on tour. Mm -hmm. It's just a shame I have to turn down quite a lot because I'm on tour um, because I just love to do different stuff as well, you know. Um, but at the moment, there's nothing, nothing planned at the moment now. Do you have the home studio? These days, everybody has. No, one. I don't actually. You don't? So no. you don't do stuff for people at home? No, I've got a couple of friends who have studios and I oh, tend yeah. to use theirs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At the moment, I've just got my, um, my garage is converted into a, um, a music room, but mainly just for, for me to practice. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> uh, but I don't actually, I don't actually have the time. The problem is I don't have the time. But my friends have got, I'll use theirs. <laughs> Cheeky. 
<laughs> okay, so best of luck with all the plans, yeah, the, the new Heap album and everything. Mm. And I hope to see you again. Well, we're playing. We're playing the third of December. Yeah, we're playing in we would like to see you in Poznan if possible. Yeah, maybe do a more in-depth interview. Fine. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll be able nice. to sort it out. Yeah. Okay. So see you That'd then. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.